Hello guys and welcome back to another Amp Creator tutorial for advancements. Today what we're going to do is cover the advancements for the procedure for conditions and stuff like that. So if we just go down here and we get a egg out, uh, the first thing that I'll be showing is well, one that we just unlocked a different thing per for advancement table. So if we go to advancements, as you can see, we have we're missing the first one, which is kind of odd, and I'll explain how that all works in just a little bit. The next one we need is a pumpkin, and the other one after that is sugar. So if we try to craft up sugar right now, uh, it won't work because I have it set up that way. So we've crafted up sugar, nothing happened, and that's because we need to break a pumpkin first. So if we go here, we place down a pumpkin, any kind will work, and then we should get the pumpkin achievement. If we place down our crafting table, grab some more sugar cane, then craft up sugar, we will get our sugar advan advancement as well. That one's not working right now, but these are basically the goals, and that's a challenge that you can basically set. The only difference is the style of box that is displayed. Now for the main advancement, it requires you to hold this item. So as you can see with our advancements now, we have all of them unlocked. Now the difference between this one and that one is it's just a little bit more spiky. This is a task, this is a goal and that is a challenge. So there's really no difference other than the display of the actual icon for the item. So outside of that, that's all there is to it. Now the one that I have here technically should work. It works on another save, but it doesn't work for some reason with this workspace and I haven't quite figured out why. If you guys figure out why it's not working, that would probably be great. I'll show you the settings that I have set up in just a second. For example, if we go to statistics and scroll down to should be distance walked, distance walked right here. So 4.10 meters. So that's four blocks. The thing is measured in centimeters. So if we walk 10, 1000 centimeters, it equals 10 blocks. So if we walk a little bit more just around some places, and we should technically unlock this particular advancement. By now we should have unlocked it. So if we go back to statistics and scroll down, we have walked 38.18 meters. Now it should have unlocked at 10. It didn't though, I'm not sure why. It's under player update tick and it should have clicked in. But if we go to our procedures, I'll show you how this all works. Okay, so we have a few different advancements here that we need to cover. The pumpkin, sugarcane, and data are all the same. The, the collect egg is running a different thing than the base advancement that we've created, which is the parent. So the parent runs it from custom script and it hide if not completed yet. So that's the only difference when this is all set up. And the egg runs a specific type of block from the items related to trigger or item related triggers, which you can grab this one right here. And this will test if the player has the amount from to the amount in their inventory. So we can set this to five and five if we want to test if the player has exactly five items of that type in their inventory. And then I've just basically added that to their to the main procedure block here. There's obviously a lot other different types of procedures, blocks that you can add directly onto this main block. And a lot of them are pretty good. They'll get you what you need done. And then there's also the custom trigger using procedures or commands. I'm not sure how the commands work yet, but uh, the procedures I'll be covering today. So the only downside with this particular system is running it from here is you don't have control over what is unlocked first. So with procedures, you can basically unlock things through and test if the player has an advancement beforehand. And if that's true, then you can unlock the, the uh, advancement. But with this, you can't unlock it. 
that's the only downside to that so if we go to the other ones I'll show you what I'm talking about if we go to advancements for pumpkins I'm running it through a custom procedure the same settings all apply over here no rewards and if we go to our pumpkin script so pumpkin block broken what I'm doing here is what uh, I'm testing for the three types of pumpkins so the global procedure is a block is broken now this is also supports the entity dependency this is really important when you're actually making advancements because you're going to need that particular advancement to make sure that the player can receive the advancement itself. So when you make sure that they have that particular dependency for the entity, then you can basically run whatever script you want as long as it fits in the, the dependency outline. So in our case, I've tested for the X, Y, and Zs as well as a world element so the block itself and we are using entity for testing if the entity has a advancement and to give the player an advancement we're testing if the player has broken the block because that's what we're doing and then we're testing for the type of block that's broken and then what we're doing is we're testing if the player has the previous advancement for before they've basic before they can unlock this one so the other one is collect egg and if they do have that true then what we can do is we can basically give them the pumpkin advancement after breaking the pumpkin block it won't run and give the advancement to the player if they don't have this advancement beforehand now if we go to our player procedures to set up this little script right here all you need to do is go down where it says has entity completed ad advancement and then grab this and then what you need to do is put it under a logic operator drop it in like that and then you need a true statement and then what you need to do is basically grab a light blue operator and then go to and and then drop that like this and then throw this little script into your main script so in our case I just basically dropped our main script on here and then I have dropped it onto our main procedure the other thing to note is you can actually duplicate and add more procedures to this particular thing. We're running it under one procedure block, this is our one procedure type, the global triggers block broken. We could name this more of a generic item like advancements block bro when block broken. And then what we could do is we could test for other blocks as well. So say if a player breaks a grass block, then we could basically run a specific advancement regardless of what parent it's under. So we could set configure it to however we wanted to. And it's still running under a block broken. And this is basically all you need to do to add on to the script for the procedure. And the last thing that I wanted to do is go to the sugar. And obviously it's the exact same thing. I'm running it under a different global trigger this one is item is crafted this has support for entity item stack and item as well as or x y and z as well as world and what i've done here is i've tested for provided item equal to and then sugar for the item and remember we're testing if the item is crafted so that's what the provided item will be it will be the crafted item and if that's basically if the player basically crafts the sugar then we're testing if they have the advancement for the pumpkins and then we'll be giving them the advancement there is just one last thing that i want to talk about and that is the my data one this is nothing special it's just like the other two that we just covered and it's just running it from a global uh, trigger and the there should be no difference with what I'm running it on my other workspace the only other major difference is it's not running on a task it's running on a challenge so I'm not sure if that's the cause of it or I think the the background is set to default as well but i didn't use a background for the other advancements so i'm not sure exactly if that's related to the problem or not but those might be two things to look into if it's not working and if we go to the walking script on player update tick i have set it to just like in my other workspace and then what i've done is i've tested if 1000 centimeters which is 100 centimeters per meter which one meter is one block so there is 10 blocks if it's equal to or greater or equal to 10 blocks 
then we should get the advancement for my data, but it didn't happen. So I'm not sure why it's not happening. I've also tried equal to or greater than, and it still didn't work. So I have no idea. It just doesn't want to run for some particular reason. And I'm not sure why. Before I go though, I want to actually show you where you can find the scoreboard for the advancements. As you can see here, if we get entity scoreboard score for, and then it should say custom score. This is under the player procedures. And if you scroll down a little bit, it's right here where it says get entity scoreboard score for, and then custom score. I did do some research and this is the page that you want for custom statistic names. And it lists what basically the name is on this side and what it does under the description. And these are the name values that you want to basically use for your custom statistics, which go back to M creator. We can go and see that we're using Minecraft walked one centimeter, which if we go back to our internet walked one centimeter is somewhere within here. So walked one centimeter for Minecraft and it's, it should work, but it doesn't. So I don't know. Anyhow, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.